see, I, I don't know your ages, but you know, I grew up with a silver standard. There was mm -hmm. certainly, uh, even before I was born, they took away the gold from the people. So the people couldn't exercise their right in the practice of a gold standard, <clears throat> but silver was still in our coinage mm -hmm. up until 1965. But, you know, and then I kid, sort of, uh, that finally, you know, uh, under LBJ, he claimed that he could, he could mint so many silver half dollar, Kennedy half dollars, that the people would never hoard them. Of course, he yeah. would have to change the price of silver. I said, but now we can't even be on a copper standard. Since yes. 1980, we can't even afford to make pennies uh, made out of copper. So it's uh, all this uh, big government stuff and spending and deficit is a result of a philosophy on economics, which uh, contradicts everything that the Austrian school teaches. Joining us today on Wall Street Silver is a very special guest, former congressman and the host of the Liberty Report, Dr. Ron Paul. Dr. Paul, thank you for joining us today. Great to be with you today. Awesome. First question is, do you believe the U.S. government really has 8,000 tons of gold at Fort Knox, or are they hiding that it's some lesser amount? <laughs> That's a good question, because the whole time I was in Congress and before that, I was always uh, on the side of seeking to get that answer. And uh, we don't know how much gold and silver they hold, and that's on purpose. And when we had the Gold Commission, we tried to demand an audit. Uh, but, you know, since we can't get the answer, and we've worked hard at it, a lot of people have, I don't uh, talk a whole lot about it, because the way I figure, Wherever it is, they have a lot of guns and they can take it even to gold that's in the hands and the pockets of American people. Just think of what Roosevelt did. He immediately just took it and came and grabbed the gold. So it's the uh, principles behind all this, the principles of the monetary system, the character of the people who are in charge that make all the difference in the, in the world. But as far as how much gold and how much silver we actually have, I, I, uh, I certainly don't know, and I've, I have found out that they resist any serious attempt to find out. Who, who does have that answer? Like, do committee chairmen in Congress, do they get access to the secret re, uh, reports, or is it somewhat only at, like, the Secretary of the Treasury level? It's like that, or the President. Those are the only people who really have that. Yeah, and I think they're controlled by the... Uh, the invisible government, the deep state, and you know, you don't become Secretary of Treasury, and you don't get into the Fed, and you don't get head of the co committees unless you're a part of that crowd. And I'm sure they're the ones who make final decisions. I think if some people say, "Well, if you could just be Secretary of Treasury, you could do all this." I don't think it's that simple because if you have 98% uh, of the other people in the Congress that's on the side of of uh, the establishment and the people who who want the system to work, uh, you 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 would you would have trouble. And uh, people want it to work. The people, the people who benefit from the type of monetary system we have, uh, they uh, there's a welfare warfare state out there, and there's a whole philosophy that's been around for a hundred years. Deficits don't matter, and that uh, we uh, should not have. They claim uh, any restraint. On, the, on these efforts. And it's, it's historic, it's been around for thousands of years. That's one of the first things that the government does if they take over, uh, even if, when, when uh, the governments were uh, very primitive, uh, if, if the monetary system was private and then a government is established, that's the first thing they do. They want control of the monetary system. And even when it's gold, they'll have control of it and hide what's really going on and like uh, we had pseudo gold standard up until 1971. In 71, we admitted there's no way we have anything, if anything left. So they, uh, they, uh, they, they really are in charge. And uh, unfortunately, it's political power that is our problem. I'd love to share a quick, um, um, I'm going to play a little clip for you with you and Ben Bernanke here. And then I want to get, ask you a question. Do you, th do you think gold is money? No. 
It's not money. It's Even a, if it's been money battle. for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. I mean, it's the same, would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're money well, either, do, but they're a financial asset. Why do asset. central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's the former money. reserves. So why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. You know, some people still think it's money. I yield back, my time is up, thank you. See, I, I don't know your ages, but you know, I grew up with a silver standard. There was mm -hmm. certainly, uh, even before I was born, they took away the gold from the people so the people couldn't exercise their right in the practice of a gold standard. <clears throat> but silver was still in our coinage mm -hmm. up until 1965. But, you know, and then I kid, sort of, uh, that finally, you know, uh, under LBJ, he claimed that he could, he could mint so many silver half dollar, Kennedy half dollars, that the people would never hoard them. Of course, he yeah. would have to change the price of silver. I said, but now we can't even be on a copper standard. Since yes. 1980, we can't even afford to make pennies uh, made out of copper. So it's uh, all this uh, big government stuff and spending and deficit is a result of a philosophy on economics, which uh, contradicts everything that the Austrian school teaches. But you know, when you had that conversation with uh, Chairman Fed Chairman Bernanke back in, I think it was 2011, and he seemed genuinely surprised by your question, is gold money? And um, I was wondering, the, the current generation of economists, all the PhDs at the Fed, they don't really believe that, do they? They don't, they don't really believe gold is money or silver. Uh, it, it's just been bred out of them, do you think? I mean, is well, there any... I it's, probably, it's probably, a com <clears throat> probably a combination. I don't think they know monetary history very well. Uh, and that means they are ignorant about it. But what they, what they do know contradicts uh, the rules they want to live by. They want to live by, uh, you know, uh, uh, control of a fiat system because they get to control the spending. But uh, it's, a, it, it's a whole system of money and a, it's a philosophy that's been taught and like, I think Bernanke did his uh, uh, PhD, uh, you know, under the whole problem with the, the depression uh, was the fact that uh, the Fed didn't do enough. And of course, some of us would argue they, they generally do too much yeah? and mm -hmm. uh, they, they should inflate more and more. And that's generally the case right now. You know, uh, just think of the monetary inflation that's going on right now. There's an announcement today that they're going to expand that, they're going to keep expanding the monetary inflation, believing, yeah. you, you know, that if you just duplicate money and have the fiat money, that you're really creating wealth. They believe that, uh, but it creates wealth for their friends is what happens because that money that goes to the bankers and big corporations first uh, has more value than it can, when it gets in circulation. So there is a wealth transfer, but that's where the big problem, political problem comes from because this whole system creates a discrepancy in wealth distribution, uh, which is uh, a great incentive you know, for the Marxists and the socialists to come in and see what freedom does to our system. Look at the result, they blame Everything that we have wrong now, whether it's inflation or whatever, uh, they, they blame that on too much freedom and uh, too much restraints uh, on the government. So, Dr. Paul, we have a question from our members on Wall Street Silver. What risk would it be to the USA if another country, say China or Russia, institutes a unilateral gold-backed currency? Well, it shouldn't bother us. Uh, they're, they're, it's going to make them very nervous and they're going to try to prevent it. Because we have, uh, since World War II, uh, we have uh, benefited tremendously by having the reserve currency of the world. And if they introduce it, they're not automatically going to be the reserve currency of the world. That's going to take a while. And even our reserve status probably won't go away overnight. It's being slowly diminished now. And when things like via, uh, Afghanistan happens, I think that weakens the international value of the uh, you know, understanding uh, the value of the currency. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to uh, going to continue. But China just announcing they're going to do that. You know, if they say, well, we're going to do it, and we're going to be twenty five percent protected by gold, it's going to. Uh, but if they do half gold and half crypto, uh, I don't know what that's going to do. But if they do gold and put it in there, it's going to probably boost the gold. But of course, uh, the dollar ratio to gold and silver is always going to go up as they print more money. 
and mm -hmm. uh, that, of course, is, uh, is 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 the problem, the distortion, because it's fraud. The founders detested it. They had the experience of the continental dollar, and that's why they they thought that if you were counterfeiting the government money, that you should be uh, uh, penalized with the death penalty. So they had a strong feeling about uh, about the honesty and money. But we're a long way from that. I don't think uh, Bernanke goes home and uh, has any, uh, you know, uh, feelings of guilt on what he's doing. Uh, he would go home angry at me is probably what he does. <laughs> you know, it, we... We're, we're currently approaching 29 billion in debt, at least the official numbers that they'll admit to, and hundred almost 150% debt to GDP. So what options does the US government even really have at this point? Is it just devaluation and inflate the, inflate the debt away? Is that really their yeah, only? Yeah, that's, that's the only uh, option they have. <clears throat> Under today's circumstances, they can't reverse it. They could, you could write them a prescription <clears throat> But there's no way they'll do it. There's uh, not enough popular support. And that is cut spending. Cut spending 5% every year until things get back and down, or even 2% every year. Cut the spending. They never cut spending. Mm -hmm. Then they'd have to give up the, uh, the, uh, the American empire, and they'd have to give up uh, all the welfare, domestic welfare. And then the uh, deep state would have to give up control of the financial system. And it's not, not going to happen. It did happen one time in our history. Well, of course, when the continental dollar failed, they put it in the Constitution. They didn't want that to happen. So they said only gold and silver could be legal tender. And uh, there would be no, uh, they could only emit bills of credit, no bills of credit, no paper money. So uh, that went, went along a long time. But uh, in, 1970, in 1861, for the Civil War, we went off the gold standard, and we were off the gold standard all the way up to 1875, and there was a bad economy, and they decided maybe we ought to be on the gold standard again. So, uh, and there was a consensus. They actually got together and said, yes, we should, because gold had soared in price. I'm, I'm sure silver did too. Uh, and so they said that we have to reverse this. So they had the Restoration Act. It was going to be a four-year period where they would shrink the number of greenbacks. Can you imagine them shrinking the number of uh, Federal Reserve notes? They did that. And by 1879, on the date of resumption, it was sort of a non-event because the dollar came back uh, to its original value and the government gave up on a lot of welfare spending that had evolved out of the Civil War. So you could do it. But, those, but right now, who would believe our government that uh, they're going to quit spending and quit printing money and we're going to have a gold, silver standard or whatever? Uh, what, no, nobody's going to believe them. What would it take? I mean, it almost seems like we need a systemic failure in the system to get back to that point. Something, you know, I don't know what that is, but, you know, whether that's hyperinflation or a, a full blown currency collapse just to clean out the people currently running the show. Is there any other scenario where we could get back to a gold standard? Well, no. Do we, do we just need to fail? No, you, you, you've described the scenario that has a 99% chance of, of coming because I described uh, why they won't do it. You know, the conditions aren't right. It's going to happen. So we have embarked on an opposition. And, you know, in the last few months, they've once again at the Fed have talked about uh, shrinking their balance sheet, cutting back the expansion of money, the rate of expansion of money. Well, that shook up the stock market and the people who own the stock market, the big time and the bankers <clears throat> and the people who run the government, they're not going to let that happen. So as soon as the markets got nervous, they quickly went back and had QE, you know, to, to recover. They kept, kept doing it. But that uh, right now they're they're, they're not going to do it. So we will have the collapse. The big question is, uh, will we have enough monetary knowledge in the right places where the, uh, where, where the reforms uh, are strongly directed toward what we're talking about, where, mm -hmm. where the, the money will be limited. You don't have a federal reserve system. And uh, I want I want as much freedom. I think the people, uh, the people will know what to do. So I'm sort of with Hayek, let the people decide what they want to use. I mean, what, it's sort of asking the question, what if we get like 
uh, like Venezuela, you know, they're floundering down there. They keep thinking, but they're getting money elsewhere. I'm sure they end up getting uh, uh, some dollars uh, from our system and from the from the Soviet Soviet type system, the, the communist, uh, and they're tiding them along. But they have to give up that system. Uh, and if it self destructs, then you have to have a rebuilding. The question is, who's going to do the rebuilding? Is it going to be the people that said this was all caused we had we had too much freedom? That's what they argue is too much uh, freedom. So we need to have more authoritarianism. That's why it frightens me to think about that. Now it's a conventional acceptance that uh, you can have uh, Marxists in our Congress. You know, that's that's where the danger is. Our universities are still filled with, sp uh, you know, sp spitting all this stuff out about why deficits uh, aren't harmful and why uh, gold is not money. Uh, but outside of the universities, shows like you have, you're at least introducing other ideas. You take a Mises Institute uh, and, and many other. I think, I think subtly uh, and quietly, there's a large number of people are starting to wake up. That's why I like people to invest uh, and protect themselves with, uh, with the metals, even though even, even though that isn't the solution, some people say, well, crypto is going to protect. But gold didn't protect us in 1933. You know, the government came in and took it. So it's a philosophic issue. You have to have people believing in liberty and what it means and what it, what it really entails. And uh, a lot of people will suffer with the runaway inflation that we'll have. But uh, I, think it, I think we're going to continue in the past of having a stag, stagflation, which has already started. That means a weak economy and prices are going up. Today, I saw a statistic show that uh, prices of houses are going up, but the sales are going down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that usually leads to a, uh, a, 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 a depression, uh, an inflationary depression. That's what Zimbabwe and, and, and uh, uh, Venezuela have. Prices soaring because the value of money goes down. Today, as our economy weakens, we're still able to increase money. People want to send us checks, you know, and, and people people still think that the problem is a shortage of money. But uh, when it gets out of control, uh, then there, the monetary reform has to come or it will be done under very dire circumstances. And uh, the black market will uh, be the real market. Uh, that's where everybody will have to go. They'll be bartering or whatever. And that is what what my goal is, is to try to prevent that because it's preventable with we, we could just start it reading the Constitution. All of a sudden, yeah. we have the rules there that would help us a whole lot, but we don't have the sentiment. But the sentiment is growing, and that's where I'm optimistic. I've talked to a lot of young people uh, throughout the years, especially uh, during the presidential races, and I know there's a lot of people out there who are very sympathetic, no matter what, what you hear and read about. And that's why I think programs like yours and an emphasis on uh, sound money, uh, very, very valuable. Uh, I would not, I, if somebody said, well, what do you, what can I do to spread this message? Should I go get a PhD in uh, economics and go into the university and teach this stuff? <laughs> Don't waste your time, yeah. uh, but learn it. I figured it, uh, by the time I got out of college, I had to, I had to on my own relearn and cancel out any economic policies I was ever taught. And uh, that means uh, the educational institutions, uh, uh, the, the the private type of institution. One of the reasons why I have a homeschooling group is to teach people these things very early on. But I think that's the whole thing that has to be happened because I don't think governments exist without the consent of the people. Uh, it takes a lot of time uh, for that to happen because you say, well, how could that people, the people didn't consent uh, to the Soviets in charge of Russia? Well, in a way they did. When they finally decided we don't want you anymore, guess what? The Soviet system just collapsed overnight, which was to me the, the uh, like a huge miracle from the 20, uh, 20th century. So, you no know, ideology is the important thing, and it's based on this moral principle. It's based on uh, you know common sense. It's based on good economic policy. It's based on more peace and prosperity. And we're not winning that fight so far. But I think when you present those those uh, thoughts to the young people I've talked to, they're very open to it because it means they can have their life 
and they can run their life as they see fit and they have to assume all the responsibility for themselves, all the mistakes they make, but they get to keep everything they earn if they don't commit any crimes of violence. You know, um, I just read your recent column, this your weekly column, and you're very critical about the $3.5 trillion human infrastructure bill going through Congress, much of which is not what we think of as traditional infrastructure spending. Uh, rather, it's more massive expansion of entitlements. Um, what are they sneaking in there? I know you, you're very familiar with this. You're on top of it. What are they sneaking in there that's not really infrastructure? Well, well the bill was divided into two. I think the 3.5 is the big one that they have yeah. not in the past. And they don't, uh, they don't call that the infrastructure bill. That, that's the, the budget that uh, was uh, sort of passed. But then they have one chance uh, in reconciliation where the party in charge can go and doctor it up and, and put more special stuff. That's where all the junk is, all the political stuff, all the reward. But the first one was like, what, 1.5 or something? Yeah, yeah 1.2. And that was that 1.2. And that was the infrastructure bill. And uh, it'd, be, it'd be hard if they were going to give, if there was a bill up, a clean bill, that they had uh, uh, 500 billion dollars, which would be huge. But if they were doing that and it was all going to go to the highways, uh, you know, not many people could vote against that. But that whole system is just a rotten system. They take all the money from the states, uh, you know, the highway funds and whatever, and from the treasury, and then they divvy it up with the states, but it's divvied up for political reasons. And they shouldn't even be in the business of that. They, if they want to have a national tax on the highways, uh, you could run that office with two people. Say, okay, uh, Texas sent in so many billion dollars. Send it back to the Texas. Let it, let the states take care of that. But the rest of it, even that 1.2, there was so much stuff in there that had nothing to do with a real infrastructure. People are convinced that they say, well, 1.2 trillion, that's going to rebuild every bridge in the country. Well, it's probably not going to, and it won't do that. Some of it will get to the highways. But one thing I found out about appropriations is by the time you authorize, appropriate, and then get the money, and then get into the building, and then you add in the environmental regulations and the other regulations in labor, you find out that it takes two or three times longer than they estimated. And guess what? You have inflation. Right now, the inflation rate is probably over 10%. So yeah. it, it doesn't work. And, and that's the problem. I would, I would never be able to vote for that kind of appropriation. Ivan, you have another question from a member? Yeah, we have a member, or here's the question here. Dr. Paul, what will be the next fiat after the USD is gone? Will we go to a gold standard as an intermediate or will there be a smooth transition to something new? <laughs> I don't think it'll be too smooth because I think the transition has already started. I, I, I think that uh, uh, there's a few people who have silver coins around <laughs> and there's a few people who have gold coins around, uh, but it won't be smooth because of the politics of, uh, of it and uh, the difficulty in getting people to agree. And it's not going to be smooth because uh, if you do it under today's circumstances, uh, the people aren't of the opinion that the thing doesn't work. They just say, we knew better people in Congress that will vote for our appropriation and send us more checks. We had a bad year last year. And every time you turn around, the Republicans and the Democrats would send more checks out. People have told me stories where I didn't even know I was getting it. And I got this check for $1,600. You know, this It's crazy. But on the short run, it's really pretty neat. You know, I got the money. But uh, it, it, but when those checks stop, uh, and they, they will stop, the whole thing stops when the creation of new money makes things worse rather than tiding people over. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, you can, uh, if you got a check for $10,000 a day from the government, you could go out and spend it and still, you know, uh, get a couple good deals. But eventually, they can send you $50,000 and you can go out and ba barely buy lunch. That's what happens, and that will be political chaos, and, uh, and we, we will be suffering from that. That's why the preliminary activity has to be educational, so people know why you have to get rid of that system that we have. You, at least philosophically, you have to have a revolution, 
and uh, the founders understood this. They couldn't reform the British government, and uh, then they, they also couldn't live with the uh, uh, with, with the continental dollar because that was uh, messing up the monetary standard. But I think there's a transition now. I think people, uh, you, you know, trade and they barter. And, and uh, one reason why we probably aren't suffering quite as much as, as we do, because I think a lot of people work off the books. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think it was, it was a statement the other day, 60% of the people under our system, we pass out so much money, 60% of the people don't pay taxes. <laughs> that came up one time during the presidential campaign, they say 50% of the people, the lower income people, they don't pay anything and they should pay something. I say, oh, 50%, we have another 50% to go, then we'll all be happy. Get rid of the income tax, put that <laughs> money, put the money into the pockets of the people, let them spend the money. And that's, we're not on the verge of that. We're on the verge of the chaos uh, scenario. And that's what we, uh, but I think in the meantime, People have to at least prepare the best they can for taking care of themselves and their families and, and uh, protect their financial interests. And that is, that is pretty difficult, I tell you. You know, there, there's a lot of different ways. And it's into the thousands now of people saying, I can't do it here. I'm going so elsewhere. We're not, we're not the freest country in the world anymore. We've dropped down on the list significantly. So there are people opting out and taking their wealth and going elsewhere. But the average person can't do that. Uh, so the only thing that we should be, well, not I shouldn't say only, the most important thing that we invest in is liberty, the promotion of liberty and assumption of responsibility and then move from there into sound money and freedom of exchange and contracts, uh, you know, and, and yet the only rule you have to follow is, is you can't commit any harm or injury to anybody. You know, uh, there should be no lying, cheating, stealing or killing, you know, uh, no aggression. And that's a pretty good rule, but a lot of people don't want to do it. And the one reason why they don't give up on that is a lot of people believe what I just said, and they would never think for a minute of stealing, but they would think very, very strongly of making sure they have a congressman that knows how to steal for them. You go in and mm. vote for that and get me my contracts and that kind of stuff. So no, <clears throat> you, you'd have to, for this to work, you'd have to have people give up on the idea of initiating aggression, but you'd have to have, uh, you know, governments not doing it either. The government should not be able to do what you're not allowed to do. Anything you're not allowed to do, government shouldn't be allowed to do. I, I think you're right. What you something you said earlier that we're probably once hyperinflation or confidence collapses and hyperinflation takes over, we might have during this transition, we might have some sort of barter system. That's why a lot of us collect these coins. I have here a gold coin, but I also have a lot of silver rounds, silver one ounce coins. What do you personally do? You, do you collect physical gold and silver coins yourself? Yeah, for, for a long time. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite? <clears throat> well, uh, I have a favorite, and uh, but I don't want to. I, I don't want to offend you if you happen to think it's a dumb idea. I like the American seagull, American eagle, silver oh, eagle. I, I have. I have it myself. I have a monster box of them myself. Uh, that that coin, I, I believe it's a, a beautiful coin. It's a one ounce, and, and I think it could be. But I, uh, when I was small, my dad had a little dairy business retailed, so he would get change to pay for the milk. And uh, also there was, uh, I had a paper route and there were other little businesses in the family where we did it deal, dealt in the, in the cash, you know, the coinage. I went through every single coin that ever passed through our place looking for it and started saving it, had the books and saved the pennies and all, all this kind of thing. I got very disappointed though after 1965, I don't look at the coins after that because they took the silver away. Yeah. But uh, back then, uh, you know, I, I would say save, uh, save silver. You know, most coin dealers I ever talked to over the many, uh, many years, many years, uh, almost all of them said, well, if you don't have anything, his, their advice generally has been get a bag of what they call junk silver, yep. which, is, yeah. which is the opposite of junk. It's, it's, uh, it, it's Consti a, constitutional silver. Yeah, that, that's it. Because one thing is it's real silver. It has real value. And, uh, I guess more so now than before, people would always recognize, you know, the old silver dollar. And I, th I think that 
that is the case. So that would be starting it. But uh, I've, uh, and especially in the 60s, I read about the uh, absolute deter- uh, uh, event that was coming, and that was uh, the end of Bretton Woods, uh, and that had ended in 1971, where foreigners couldn't even turn in their dollars for gold. And uh, if you look at the charts for 1971 up, tremendous increases, you know, whether it's debt or spending or whatever goes flatten and boom, and it, it, it can't keep going up like that. So uh, I think that I got interested. I had a spell of 12 years between terms in Washington, and I had a, I had a, news, a gold newsletter I had out and actually, uh, you know, sold gold coins uh, in, in uh, partnership with another coin dealer. So I know I've been interested a very, very long time, and, uh, but it really got started early, early on, you know, with just looking at coins and, and being interested in money itself. I, I just want to say thank you so much, Dr. Yeah, Paul, we, for, for joining us here. We, we, we were at the 30 minute limit that you, uh, you guys, unless you can stay longer, we'd love to talk. Uh, you, you, uh, matter of fact, if, if, did we do 30 minutes? Yeah, yeah, we're at about 30 minutes right now. So. Well, for, for some reason, my she said 15. So I want my 15 minutes back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, we, we thank you so much, All right, Dr. Good. Ball.